Hi guys, in this video we're going to be talking about adding up those tricky little decimals. It's actually a lot easier than you think. Let's go ahead and get started. I have three numbers on my screen here. I have the number 2 and 2 tenths, 436 thousandths, and the number 101. When I am adding these and I want to add them up, the most important thing to remember is that when I'm adding decimals, you need to line the decimals up into a straight line. That means that when I have the decimals written down, when I'm adding them together, they're going to make a straight line up and down. So let's go ahead and actually solve this problem. I'm going to add 2 and 2 tenths, 436 thousandths, and 101 together. What I'm going to do is when I'm doing this, I'm also going to make my decimal a different color so that you can see it. So I'm just going to start with my first number. And since we're adding these, you could really start with any number. But I'm going to write down 2, here's my decimal, and 2 tenths. And now for my next number, 436 thousandths. Before I do anything else, I'm going to put my decimal point in first. And so I'm going to line the decimals up straight up and down in a straight line. So there's my decimal, and now I'm going to fill in the rest of the number. So there's my 4 and my 3 and my 6. And notice that when I'm writing these, and this is why grid paper is really helpful with this, um, I want to make sure that all of my other digits are nice and lined up as well. Next thing I'm going to write in my number 101. Notice that there's no decimal point in this one. But it is a whole number, and the thing we know about whole numbers is that there's always a decimal point to the right of the ones place, even though it might not be written there. So just like what I did with 436 thousandths, I'm going to put my decimal point in first, and I'm just going to rewrite my decimal point there so that you can see. So there's my decimal point. Notice that all of my decimals are lined up in a nice straight line going up and down. So I'm going to write in the rest of my number. And now notice, I'm going to actually kind of work backwards a little bit. So there's my 1, and then my 0 is in the tens place, and my 1 in the hundreds place. All right? So you can see we kind of have these goofy gaps now. And if the gaps are confusing to you, what I recommend you doing is putting in what I call the placeholder of a 0. The zeros don't have any value but they're just nice to add in. And actually, I'll show you my trick. My trick, what I do is when I put in the zeros as placeholders, I just like to put them in as little circular dots when I make my zeros. And that way, it just helps me keep everything nice and neat. And so I'm not like, oh, am I missing a number there? I actually know that it's just a zero. Okay, so everything is nice and lined up. My, my digits are all lined up. My decimal points are all lined up. Let's go ahead now and actually solve this. So we're adding this together. Here we go. 0 and 6 and 0, that's a 6. 0 plus 3 plus 0 is a 3. 2 and a 4 is a 6 plus a 0. 2 plus 0 and a 1 is a 3. Notice I just skipped over the decimal point for now. That's a 0. And then 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. When I add my decimal, the last thing I do is I just bring my decimal point straight down. And so my answer to this problem is 103 and 636 thousandths.